My first camera was given to me by my grandmother when I was 10 years old. And I just photographed my life, you know? And at that time, 10 years old was just stuff. I was building model cars, so I was taking pictures of my model cars. Model cars became real cars, and that little plastic camera kind of went on the shelf. When my life evolved from hot rods to rock and roll, so did the photography. I ended up shooting music starting about 73. The pictures of the musicians that I was passionate about, I didn't really try to sell, I just tried to get good at it. I thought maybe I could make a living as a photographer. You know, one of the very first artists that actually kind of treated me like an artist was Tom Waits. I had become a huge Tom Waits fan. I had ideas, he let me express them and use them in the photography sense, and it was great. He treated me as if I was an artist, not just some joker with a camera. Nobody in Chicago really cared about shooting country music, so I did. One of the coolest weekends of my entire life, I got sent to East Texas by the Chicago Tribune, and we spent the weekend at George Jones's farm, and we were down there to photograph and interview Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash was one of the coolest guys. Him and June posed and did whatever I asked him to as far as photographs, it was great. I was shooting album covers for epic records, country, rock, they paid, and I'd shoot the blues guys for nothing. The very first pictures in my Allman Brothers photo album was from 1973. And then 73, 74, 75, 76, I was there all the time. Summer of 79, my relationship with the band really solidified. So from 89 to 2010, I was the photographer and then the assistant tour manager and then the tour manager and then the tour mystic and then the tour, you know. And that's how it grew, you know. I finally got off that bus in 2010. In 1993, my wife and I, Kirsten, bought the big house and moved down here from Chicago. Yeah, the big house, the band, the wives found the big house in January, February, 1970. And it became the hub. Blue Sky was written in the living room. Ramblin' Man in the kitchen. Hot Atlanta in the little rehearsal room. You know, I mean, there it was. April, 94, Warren Haynes, Alan Woody, and Matt Apps moved into the big house and created Government Mule. And then they set up in the archive rooms the same room that the Allman Brothers used to rehearse in. And uh, for 10 days, they, they worked up their first set of songs. And it became a museum because it was the thing to do with it. There it sits, the Big House Museum. I decided to do a, a, a coffee table book of my own, Allman Brothers photography. It was a combination of a fine art coffee table book and a family scrapbook. And it was a success. And then a couple years later, I did my blues book, my blues photography. And it was my years shooting the blues in Chicago. Although I grew up not knowing anything about the blues, I didn't start even hearing it until 1965 or six. And that's what got me to Chicago. Me personally would have done none of this, couldn't have accomplished any of it if it hadn't been for my wife. She's the one that made everything happen. Kirsten opened this gallery nine years ago, and we've been here selling my photography in a little town in Macon, Georgia. But what's happening downtown is just miraculous. You know, I think that the music that has come from middle Georgia, Bibb County, Macon, it touches people, it touches them deep. It's history, it's music, going way, way back before any long-haired hippie boys or anything. I mean, this is deep. It's in the water, they say, you know? And it's a wonderful thing that's going on here in Macon, and I'm proud that we're part of it.